everyone and welcome back for a new lesson. You now know how to select your variables, how to filter your data entries, and today you are going to discover the mutate verb, which we are going to use to create new variables and modify existing ones. This is an extremely important verb for your data wrangling journey, so I hope you're excited and let's go. Let's start as per our usual with the learning objectives. Our learning objectives for today is that you will be able to use the mutate function of the Diplor package to either make a new variable or modify an existing variable in your data set. You will also be able to create different types of new variables, whether they be numeric, character, factor, or Boolean. So, the packages we'll be using will be here, janitor, and tidyverse. So, all pretty familiar to you. And in our data sets, we're going to have some originality because we're not going to use only the COVID-19 Yaoundé data set that we've been using in the past two chapters. We're also going to introduce a new data set, which is a cross-sectional study coming from India about sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is a condition most common in the elderly population, so superior to 60 years old. And it consists in a generalized loss of skeletal muscle mass and strength. Let's start by loading our Yaoundé data set. So as per our usual, we're going to read in the CSV. Then we're going to subset some variables that we're interested in. Alrighty, so our classical data frame that we're used to, 971 data entries and six different variables that we'll be using in our different examples today. Our second step will be to load the sarcopenia data frame. So, sarcopenia data frame, we're going to read in the CSV. And this data set has 239 data entries, so less than uh, our other data set, but it has more variables, which you'll be discovering bit by bit through the practice questions. So now, moving into the heart of the subject, the introducing mutate verb. How should you conceive mutate? Mutate is a bit like this image. So anytime you want to change or construct something new in your data set, you should think of this uh, verb. You should think about this moving of columns and variables to get what you want. So mutate is really your constructor changer verb. Mutate is going to be written up as your data frame pipe mutate, the new column equal to what it contains. So the new column name will be also defined at the same time as you create it. And what it contains can be many, many different things. We're going to start off by an example using the height centimeter column from the Yaoundé data set. We're going to first start by making a subset of our Yao subset data set so that we are only keeping the height centimeter column. That way, it'll be easier for us to see what we're doing. So there we go. We now have all our data entries, but only with one variable. That way we'll see how we're modifying it. And the plan is going to be to create a new variable. So what are we going to do? Well, if we want to create a new variable using the height centimeter column, we could, for example, convert it to the height meters variable, which means that we're going to apply to it an equation, which is the height centimeter column divided by 100. So in the code, we would write mutate height meters is equal to height centimeters divided by 100. Let's run this. And we see that now we have two variables with one of them in centimeters, one of them in meters. So mission accomplished. Now. Onwards for a new example. We are going to do another example, but this time we're going to modify a variable that already exists. Our scenario is that it's like there has been a small error in the equipment that we use to measure the heights. And what we want to do now is correct this because all the heights are five centimeters too small. So we're going to change this variable 
while keeping the same name, so modifying in place variable. And we're going to do so with the mutate function. So in the code, this is going to look like this. Mutate height centimeters equals to height centimeters plus five, because we're correcting it for five centimeters. And now we only have a single variable output because we are changing an in-place variable. And all the values in every single data entry have been augmented by five centimeters. Now, it's your turn to try the mutate verb out. I hope you're excited for this first trial of this new verb. You're going to be using the sarcopenia data frame, and you're going to be using the weight kilogram variable inside this data frame. You're going to do something similar to what we just did. You're going to create a new variable called weight grams, where you're going to store the respondent's weight in grams instead of kilograms. So your answer should go in Q weight to grams using this template. And you should remember that one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. Good luck for the conversion, good luck for using mutate, and see you in a second. So welcome back. Hopefully you now see how user-friendly the mutate function is. And concretely, you've used mutate, you know how it works, you know how the syntax is, so we can end the lesson here. Bye-bye. Okay, just kidding. This would be wonderful, but the truth is that the devil will be in the details as says the expression. This means that what's complicated is not the mutate verb by itself, but how you combine it with other helper functions which allow you to change and construct things in different ways. So let's start with one thematic. It's creating a variable from scratch, which is a row index. As you saw previously, most of your variables are going to reference an existing variable. So your height meters reference the height centimeter variable. Height centimeter was modified in place by adding five centimeters. But you can also create a variable that we call from scratch, where um, it's not referring to any others and it's independent. And such an example would be the row index. To get such a row index, you would be combining the use of mutate and then the, the, um, a sequence of numbers, which you will have generated using 1 to n. The n function is a function from Dippler, which returns the number of rows in your data frame. So what this would look like in the code would be something like this. All right, let's create a row index. We're going to call it row index. So it has a representative column name. And we're going to write that it's equal to 1 to n, so 1 to the number of rows. What does this look like? Well, we get a data frame with two different variables. And this row index, it allows us to have a unique identifier per row. Now, you're going to add a variable to the sarcopenia data frame called respondent ID, so the unique ID identifiers we were talking about. You're going to make it using n or n row, whatever you think is appropriate, and you're going to store the result in Q sarcopenia respondent ID following this template. You should just understand that if you're working in your console, maybe the new column you're going to create, respondent ID, won't appear because the new columns are always placed at the end. So you would see it in the list of columns here, and then if you wanted to make sure you really have it, you really had created it, or even visualize it, then you have two options. You can either use the view function to see your entire data frame in a separate tab, or you can use the select function where you would select respondent ID and make sure that you have actually created it. All right, have a go and see you in a second. Welcome back. I hope you had an easy time making that respondent ID column. Let's now move on to another example. We are now going to see how to create a Boolean variable. Boolean variables are used to categorize a population. That's why it's useful to create Boolean variables. 
Here we're going to create a very simple example of a Boolean variable, which is called isChild. It's either true if the subject is a child, or false if the subject is an adult. Let's first start off by selecting the age years variable and then performing mutate on our data frame. So select age years and now let's mutate, let's create is child equal to and this is where we're going to input our condition age years inferior or equal to 18. So let's run this. There we go. Now, instead of having to kind of visually look and identify in the numbers which, one is, which ones are below 18, so these two, we have a variable which tells us in a very visually easy way which ones are adults, so all the false, and which ones are children, so these two, the true. It's very useful to binarize and to categorize your population, and that's also very essential if you want to get maybe some counts out of your population. So if you want to learn about the children that are within the Yaoundé dataset, you can use janitor tabil to see how many there are. So let's write this up in the code using our new variable is child. So we define it in the same way as we did before and in tabil we write is child. And you see, it's already there. Ta-da! And there we go. This way, we see that we have 662 adults, 309 children, and so that we have 31.8% of the data set, which, con which is composed of children. It's a very easy way of getting percentages and proportions out of your data set. And it's really important that you know this little trick so that you can quickly look over different variables that are interesting to you. Alrighty, let's see one more example because the Boolean concept can be a bit challenging sometimes. So, this time we're going to use the symptoms variable to report about people who had different respiratory symptoms and people who did not. So we're going to create a Boolean variable called has no symptoms, which is going to be set to true if respondents didn't have any symptoms, and set to false if they had any kind of symptom. A combination or a single one doesn't matter. So we'll first start by selecting the symptoms and then writing up our mutate. So we're going to select symptoms and then we're going to create our has no symptoms new variable and it's going to be equal to the following condition so this condition we're going to use will be symptoms equal equal no symptoms this way those that have no symptoms are, are evaluated as true and those who have any other input, which is not no symptoms, will be evaluated to false. When we run this, we see that someone who has muscle pain is evaluated to false, someone who has no symptoms, like these two people, are evaluated to true, and then any kind of combination of symptoms is also evaluated to false because they do have symptoms. So, your practice question will be to now use the grip strength variable in the sarcopenia data set. So you're going to work with the grip strength because we know that women with a grip strength below 20 kilograms are considered to have low grip strength. And we want to categorize the population based on low or high grip strength. So you're going to make a new variable called low grip strength that is evaluate it to true if women have a grip strength inferior to 20 kilograms and false for others. The second question is going to be what percentage of women surveyed have a low grip strength? So 
Take your time to find out how you want to write that up. Remember to put in a numeric value. Remember that there's tabule, which is quite useful from janitor. So, um, and give it a go. I'll see you back here in a minute. Welcome back. I hope that practice question went well. We're now moving on to a new way of using mutate. And this will be to create a numeric variable. So I kind of spoiled this for you earlier on in the lesson. We are going to be using what we did with the height in meters to now create a new health indicator called BMI, which is the body mass index. It follows the following formula. So the weight in kilograms divided by the height in meters squared. We're first going to start by selecting the weight in kilograms and the height in centimeters. Then we're going to make the conversion we did before. So height in meters is equal to the height in centimeters divided by 100. And we're going to write our BMI formula. So we're going to call our variable BMI equals to what we saw just above. So the weight in kilograms divided by height meters, which is squared. So let's look at that. There we go. For all of our data entries, we took their weight and their height, we converted the height to meters, and then using height in meters and the weight in kilograms, we created the BMI index. Let's also save the BMI variable now. That way we can use it later. So the way we save it is that we call it Yao BMI. Ta-da! Now we're going to save this new variable. There we go. And then we're going to get to your next practice question, where you're also going to implement a mathematical formula to make a new variable. So you're going to implement the appendicular muscle mass, because this is a useful health indicator for the sarcopenia data set. It's the sum of the muscle mass in all four limbs. So it seems a bit more impressive than the BMI formula, but it truly isn't. It's just numbers and multiplications and additions. So it uses the weight, the height in meters, in meters, the sex, and then the age in years. What you see here, this minus 4.5 at the end, that's, um, let's say, a calibration to also include Asian populations. Then, as a reminder, the sex variable is going to be encoded either one or zero for male or female responders. So keep that in mind. And then I invite you to calculate the ASM value for each individual of the sarcopenia data set and then come back for the last part of the lesson. See you in a bit. Welcome back. All right, last part of the lesson. We're going to learn how to change a variable's type using mutate. So for this, there are many helper functions which you can use as integer, as factor, as character, as date. And then you will put them inside the mutate call to do this data type change. It's super useful because there are so many times where you get a category which is not encoded as a factor. You get numbers that are encoded as characters instead of integers or doubles. So it's really, they will save your life so many times when you're doing data wrangling. So you'll get very familiar with these. All right, let's take our Yao BMI data set and let's convert the BMI to an integer instead of a double. So we're going to make our new variable called BMI integer and we're going to equal it to as integer. You see, it even finds it, ta-da, BMI. So this is going to look like that. We now have a fifth column where we see that 33.26214 was converted to simply 33. So this is what as integer does. All right, but then if we're, you're working with numbers, there are some specificities, specificities that you should know about as integer. 
So it truncates your integers and it doesn't round them. So your 22.8 becomes 22, not 23, as we would expect. So for that, if you want to correct it, you can use the round function. What is this going to look like? Well, let's see it in code. We're going to, after making our BMI integer, we're going to make our BMI round. We're going to say round BMI. This way, we can see the difference. Alrighty, there you go. Here, what we see is that this is our original BMI. It doesn't change anything for the two first columns, but for here, our 22.8, we see that BMI with as integer is 22, but then the right rounding up is using round, which converts it to 23. So this is useful to know. On this note, it's your turn to do your last practice question. So this last practice question is going to be using the Sarcopenia data frame as usual. So you're going to use as integer on the age variable of the respondents. And don't care about this whole rounding business I just explained here. Just use as integer. It's going to truncate the years, but that's fine um, because we usually care about years truncated. Maybe it doesn't change that much. And well, I invite you to put your answer in Q age integer. And after this practice question, I'll see you for the wrap up. So see you in a bit. So congrats, you have already learned so much. You know how to select, how to filter, how to mutate, and you know how to start using so many different helper functions along the way with these different verbs. Now we're just going to continue going in depth, learning more, becoming better data wranglers. And for the next lessons, we're going to see another very important helper verb for mutate. And then we'll get into even more complex wrangling, such as grouping the variables, summarizing them. So you have already mastered these verbs. So select, filter, mutate. Now let's continue on our journey. Let's reach the next level together and see you soon in the next lesson. Bye-bye. For more resources, visit our website where you can track your progress, access interactive quizzes and lesson notes and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.